Welcome back to AJ on Perfect Solutions. In this week's lesson, we will be covering Firebase Authentication, or better known as AuthN, and Firebase Authorization, better known as AuthZ. To simplify this process, we're gonna be using Firebase's Firebase UI, which is supported under their GitHub repo to do the login. We'll walk through each of the login providers and how to set them up, and then cover AuthGuards and the can load, so we can prevent the loading of a lazy loaded route and kick you back to a welcome screen. If you're new to the material series lesson that we have on AJ on P, go ahead and grab the GitHub repo that's in the description or the lesson file. We're gonna start there and install the Firebase UI package. So NPM I and then Firebase UI. In this next section, we're going to generate both the modules for user and the module for user sign-in as a child of that and lazy load both. The reason that we're going to create the user module is that we'll probably end up setting a profile type of page in another lesson. Um, for now, we're just going to put place that user sign-in as a child of user though. This is gonna work similar to how the books are laid out. Um, you can check that out as well so that you can understand lazy loaded routes if this is your first time using them. Next, we're going to update the user sign-in component HTML. We just need to provide a div where the uh, HTML for Firebase UI actually is generated. Um, so we'll place an ID out there for Firebase UI-auth container, which it'll hook up to. You can find the full source code on the lesson page or I'll provide it in the GitHub link in the description on YouTube. What this is is the base configuration that is um, standard for Firebase UI. And what we're setting up here are the different Firebase UI login options. So for today's lesson, we're gonna cover Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, an email provider, and a phone auth provider. Um, something to pay attention closely to is the fact that you do need a terms of service and a privacy link. Um, these aren't necessarily required, but they're kind of best policy to have those. Um, so I would recommend just creating something generic and setting those up. I've done this against our agent P page uh, that will allow us to link back to our normal terms of service and privacy. In the last step of this process, you'll assign to the variable UI a new instance of the auth UI um, class. And by doing so, you'll also start up the UI configuration. You'll notice here that we have the ID tag again for Firebase UI auth container. That's going to hook up with our HTML. Now in our main app routing module, we're gonna set up the path to user sign-in. Of course, I'm already forgetting and you can see it, me typing it out here that we are actually doing a user and then user sign-in uh, location, but that's gonna be incorrect as well as I struggle through this. Uh, I'm, I'm typing all these out manually. So we're gonna set the path of user, but then within a user routing, we're gonna actually um, use the load children lazy loading to the user sign-in itself. Now, if you jump into the user routing module, we can actually copy the app routing module and paste it into the user routing module. This is again gonna be an empty path because we're already within the user routing. And then we'll update this to say user sign-in, go ahead and lazy load our user sign-in module. If you're like me and you let VS Code do a lot of work for you, it often puts the .ts file in. I'm realizing I left this in on the app routing and the user routing, so go ahead and clean those off. And now we're gonna put that hashtag. And of course, me being the clumsy developer that I am, I've forgotten the name of the user sign-in. So if you go to user sign-in module, you can copy that and place it after the hashtag. Now, once again, we can copy the route with the path and the load children from user routing and we'll put that into the user sign-in routing because we are already within the user sign-in this will be a fully empty path now and we'll update it to just load our component so yeah that was a lot of work to get a, a lot of lazy loaded uh, components uh, down our tree through the modules but we finally ended up at our user sign-in component this is just a, a good structure to set up for your future. Um, as you add more modules, you can continue to load more. 
Now there are two type of errors that you might run into that I wanted to cover here just in case you happen to hit them. One is that you didn't expose the component out to consume. So you can go back into the module and declare the component. The second error that you might run into is a static injection error that Angular Fire Auth is not available. I didn't show this on purpose so that users that have never done this before can run into these errors and we can work through them. So in your app module, we actually need to load similar to Angular Firestore, we need to load up the Angular Fire Auth module. That way we can use dependency injection to include it with our lazy loaded Firebase UI. Now we can manually navigate to the user slash user dash sign in page. What you'll notice out here is that we're seeing a very unstyled representation. This is also because we haven't included the styles for Firebase UI, so we'll go ahead and do that next. The Angular CLI provides some pretty nice tools to be able to include the styles from any node package pretty simply. All we have to do is search for the styles array under architect build and we can add the node modules, Firebase UI, and then include the Firebase UI.CSS and it will package these and bundle them up and allow them to go to the site. So now if you take and refresh the page, you should see that it has changed uh, to a nicely styled uh, Firebase UI layout. You're probably thinking at this point, sweet, we have it all set up and we're good to go. But in reality, if you try the, any of the login items, they will tell you that they're not set up yet and that the provider is disabled for the Firebase project. So at this time, if you're using your own Firebase project, you'll need to go into the console and I'll walk you through how to set up each of the providers. Now, if you happen to have success on this and you know you haven't set up a Firebase project yet, it's probably because you're still using mine. Let's go ahead and double check that on your project, you have the database for Firestore set up, and then you can hit the gear at the top and go into project settings. Click on the HTML link, and that's gonna give you the environment variables that we'll need. We'll go back into the project and update our environment variables so that they match your project. So from here on out, you make sure you're using your project and not mine. Navigate into the environments folder and update both the standard environment.ts and the environment prod.ts with your new key that you copied from Firebase. The simplest provider to get started with is the Google sign-in provider. It will be all set up already for your project. You just need to select the correct email. You can update this uh, on your project settings, but for now you should just have a default email. Once you hit save on this and have it enabled, we can go back to the, the website that you're trying out for our project and you can log in using Google. You'll notice here that we're doing a redirect. So once the Google portion of the sign-in completes, it will come to a white box that has a loader on the top. The URL is the same that we sent it out from, but when we actually successfully sign in, we're gonna redirect to a URL slash books that we already have in our routing. Now that we've finished up how to add authentication using Firebase and Firebase UI, we're gonna move on to authorization, both in the back end and the front end of your app. First thing that we're gonna to need to do is create a new service for our authorizations. You can do this by doing ngg service, and then we're gonna put it in core services auth. Next item on our list is an interface so that we know what our user model will look like. So we're gonna include that with the Angular CLI ngg interface, and then we'll place that in core models and we'll call that HMP user. Feel free to name yours however you'd like. If you'd like to save yourself some time, you can just copy this from the GitHub repository and just paste it into one of your files. There's a couple extra fields in here, but play co pay close attention to the UID and display name. Those are probably the primary ones that we'll be looking at. The roles are also for the authorization side of things and we'll be passing those around as well, so they're important to include. In our authorization service, we need to start tracking our user information that comes from Angular Fire Auth. And so in order to do that, we will set up a global user observable and we're gonna switch map this so we can get data directly from our database instead of just the default user. That's why we need the HMP user. The next step is to take that on the initial creation and update our data in the database every time a user logs in. So we'll say, if a value exists, go ahead and apply everything Otherwise, just, 
just apply the updates. And if there's any issues with this, kick us back to the sign in URL. Now that we have our authorization service set up, we can use dependency injection in our side nav to include it. And then we can use auth throughout our side nav portion of the app. Whenever a authenticated user is signed in, it will show their logo. Otherwise it will show the sign in button. Now that we have the auth service exposed, we can set up an async pipe so that when a user is logged in, we can say show the template for an authenticated user. And when they're not, you can be a guest user and it will show the sign up login button. Now, technically that's just the authentication process, but because we've added the user into Firestore at this point, without the authorization piece to this, you can't update Firestore for this user. And we're immediately signing a role as a subscriber when we're inputting that user into the database. So the next part we're gonna take a look at are the Firestore rules that help to secure your backend data. So what you'll notice here is that on the user's path or the collection inside of Firestore, we're saying you can't create or update if you're pushing in roles as admin and editor. You can only do this update through the console within Firebase for our application. There's other ways that you can work on this, but I think it's the most secure um, to assign roles directly in the console at this point or via CLI. Now that we've made sure our backend is secure, what we wanna do on the front end is start to utilize some of these roles. We've always had a fab button in the past, but we wanna only show this if you're an admin or editor, not a normal subscriber. We already had the button set up to have a show book add observable against the behavior subject that we were setting based on the route. What we're gonna do next is include some security checks to make sure the role is correct and we'll then pass if we want to show that button or not in the same behavior subject. In our auth service, we're gonna add a simple method that says can create and we'll pass in the two allowed roles and then we'll check this authorization to see if that's okay. We can now add in that same if statement where we're updating the behavior subject based on the route, a check against our author, a check against our user that we're authenticating with, and we will pass in the user. And based on this, we can check and see if they can create, which will update to show the plus button. Again, this is only on the front end, so make sure you've updated that back end. The last major goal in our authorization is to prevent anyone from actually accessing a route using route guards. And we can do this asynchronously and check to see if it's valid that that user is allowed into a route. We won't even load the lazy load loaded module unless they have the correct authorization and role to access the edit portion of a book. In order to add this guard, we'll use the Angular CLI again and do ngg for generate guard and we'll place this in core guards auth. The type on this is gonna be can load as we don't even want to load the lazy loaded module once again. I had created this auth guard once before so I actually copied and pasted a lot of this code back in but I wanted to walk through each step. So here we're using our depends dep <sighs> So here we're using our auth service once again, and what we're gonna do is on the observable, just take it one time once it's hit, and we're gonna check to see if our user is allowed to edit this. If it's not, we're gonna trigger them back to the correct sign-in navigation. However, if they are, we're gonna map that user down and check again. If there's no user, we'll block them completely and forward them to the sign-in as well. Each of these include a snack bar that will pop up when the user uh, runs into one of these errors. Now we need to update our routing accordingly by adding the can load uh, attribute. And then we will pass into the array the auth can edit that we just created. You have to pay close attention to where you're adding this. It has to be at the parent that will then load the child in the lazy load, not at the child itself. Now we can log in as a user that has the subscribe only role. I'll use my normal personal account for this, alex.patterson at gmail.com. And you'll see that when we try to manually go to the URL for slash edit, this won't allow us in and it will kick us back to the welcome screen. 
However, if I were now to sign out and sign back in with my full admin role, this will let us get to the edit. It will present the edit button correctly. And then we can edit the book as we normally would in the past. This lesson has a lot to take in between authentication and authorization. If you're flipping on your head and you can't figure it out, come join us on the Slack channel and I'll help you out. I'll be following up this lesson with a lesson on how to add all of the subscribers that we've seen today in the Firebase UI and how to work through all of the OAuth authentication.